Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. I have been eyeing this palette for ages now and I'm so glad that I finally got it this year. A quick disclaimer that this video is not sponsored by our toolkit and I bought everything with my own money. I think it's perfect for travel and plein air painting. One of my art goals this year is to be less scared of painting outside since I didn't manage to do that very much last year. And I will be traveling to Asia this year in the spring, so I want to get this palette ready and try it out for a few weeks before my trip. I also got these extra pants because even if I didn't decide on the layout, but I did know that I prefer these 1mm rectangular pens because I can dip bigger brushes in there. I also knew that I wanted three separated mixing spaces for blue and green and grey. I did some plannings in my sketchbook and I narrowed down the colors from 24 to 18. I think that's more than enough for painting outside. Here is the comparison of my regular Schmincke palette and the Folio palette. And this one is the generic watercolor palette. I made these little paper chips to help me decide how I want to arrange them. My idea is to mix warm colors like yellow, red, pink and earth tones on the big mixing space on the top and cooler colors like green, blue, grey on the bottom. It took me a while to move things around and it feels almost like a game of mix and match and it's weirdly satisfying. I also tested to see if the magnet was strong enough to hold these pans in place and none of them moved which is really great. Now I'm taking out the paints that I have chosen for this palette. I spent so much time researching and testing different paints, partially because it's kind of addictive, but also because I was inspired by Sarah Burns' video about choosing non-toxic watercolor paints. So I didn't choose any color with cadmium or cobalt in it, Now I will leave you in peace to enjoy the squeeze. The only paint with honey in this palette is this anthrochrome blue from Mgram. When I first got this tube of paint, I knew that it's gonna take forever to cure, so I squeezed out some paint to let it dry over time. 
And more than a year later, in this very dry Swedish winter, it is still like the consistency of soft taffy. I scooped it out with a nail art tool and tried to make it as even as I can. And the fingers crossed, I hope it doesn't get all over the place when I travel. I left this palette slightly open for two days, and the paints have mostly dried. I made some small changes, and now it's time for the swatch card. I discovered a few new paints this year, and my recent favorites are Green Gold and Indigo from Winter Newton, Mountain Blue and Ultramarine Violet from Schminke, and Perylene Scarlet from Daniel Smith. But I had to say goodbye to one of my old favorites, that is Chinese Orange from Sennelier because it has PY150 in it, and that's Nico Azo Yellow. I replaced it with Transparent Pyro Orange, but it's my least favorite color here. I'm still looking for a softer orange, so do let me know if you have anything to recommend. And by the way, let me know if you want to know more about my color choices and how I like to use them. I'm thinking to make a video about that in the future. I put Mountain Blue in two pans here because I like to keep one separated for mixing greens, mostly for mixing with green gold. This is a combination very similar to Sap Green but with more temperature shift, which I think is really beautiful. The reason I'm keeping Perylene Green on a mixing pan instead of a regular pan is that I like to use this color to do value studies and the mixing pan helps me to see the consistency better. I also noticed that the mixing surface is really nice. It's super smooth, but the water doesn't beat up on it, and that's very important. I guess if I have to complain, I think the edge here is a bit too sharp. I wish it could be a bit rounder, because when I press my thumb against it, it feels a little bit uncomfortable. I was also a bit worried that the paint water gathered here can leak out from the backside, but I'm glad to see that it didn't happen, so it's really well designed. I already have a whole bunch of things in my pencil case, but this palette is so lightweight and thin that it fits perfectly in there. I'm really looking forward to bringing it out and testing it in the field. I hope this video is helpful in some way and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.